Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Today we're looking at the Earth's interior and in particular we're looking at convection currents. And we're going to look at which layers inside the Earth have convection currents, how they work, uh, why they're important to learn. We're going to bring in some physics, we're going to bring in some thermodynamics, uh, we're going to bring in some history with our scientists and tie in our lovely continental drift and into the appreciation and knowledge we have now uh, of the Earth's interior by the uh, use of seismic waves and energy waves from earthquakes. So let's get into it. So what is a convection current? Now first, convection is a, uh, a method or type of thermal movement. Now it generally happens in uh, air, or gases it happens in our atmosphere, in particular in the uh, troposphere, which is the, the the layer surface. It also happens in liquids, and it happens to a small, very small effect in some solids, which we'll look at today in the Earth's interior. So, in terms of the basic schematic, what I do basically is how I just do two lines, two surfaces, two mediums. And I have, um, over here, I have a hot surface. And on the other, other side, I have a cold surface. And there's some sort of like uh, medium or material in between the hot and the cold layers. So I would use, for example, a candle as an example, or a fireplace, whatever your students can relate to. And I'll basically say that the hot, let's just say that it's air, for example. Now, we all know that balloons and how they work, where hot air rises. So the rule is hot air rises. Okay, so you're going to have draw an arrow uh, from the hot surface upwards towards the cold surface. Okay, pretty simple, right? When it gets up to the cold, there is less, well, there's not more cold, there's actually less heat or less thermal energy. There's really no such thing as coldness, it's just a lack of heat or lack of thermal energy. So, again, if you get into more particle physics this way and say that, you know, heat is the the atom or the element or the molecules, um, once you add in energy, energy to that uh, atom, it's going to be more energized and it's going to move. So first you add the energy, which is radiation, which happens in straight lines, comes from the sun. The molecule of air absorbs the energy and then it starts to move, it becomes energetic. Now, as it moves around, it's going to play bumper cars with other molecules that are doing the same thing. They are also energized and absorbing energy and they're going to move around and eventually they're going to hit each other. When they hit each other, they release energy, and that is called thermal energy and heat loss. And we record that as temperature. So on a hot day, you could say the air is energized through absorbing energy from the sun, radiation, and they are colliding, hitting, having collisions in the air, and those collisions are causing energy to be released into the surrounding atmosphere void as you as you would take it and that would increase the temperature and if you have a colder day for example in in the winter you just have less collisions less collisions and therefore less or a reduced temperature or as we call it it gets colder so you can go into as much detail of physics as you want, but, they, but the students have to understand why 
the hot air is going to rise. So, so in summary, you get an air molecule, you add radiation, and that equals movement, movement of the air molecule. And that increases the chance of collisions, and the collisions will release energy that's stored inside the uh, air molecule as thermal energy, which is known as heat, and then more collisions equals more heat, and we call this hotter. So what you also want to explain is this. Let's take this theoretical given area of air. And we call it an air parcel. It's so scientists can look at a, 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 a certain area or volume of air rather than have to calculate the entire atmosphere, which can be very, very complex, but really taking it down into more simplistic or more uh, easier ways to calculate uh, various, various things in the atmosphere by using a, a set parameter, which is called an air parcel. So let's just take this air parcel and it's filled with air molecules, okay? Now, if I'm gonna add radiation, I'm going to make these air molecules move. When they move more and become more energized, they're going to move and expand the volume in which they occupy. So in this case, if you add more radiation, the air parcel is going to expand. So that's why we say hot air rises, because once that air parcel expands, it becomes less dense. It's increased its volume with the same amount of air molecules inside of it. So it basically becomes less dense, and it's lighter than the surrounding air, so it's going to rise up. So we established that hot air rises, and why hot air rises in this particular reason. So when it gets to the cold layer, where there is less thermal energy, less collisions, the air parcel will uh, retract and get smaller, therefore the density will increase, then what will happen is uh, it won't, so it's stopped by this layer, so it can't really go up any further past this, this layer is going to be moved to the left and to the right. It's going to stay in this colder region. So it becomes denser on both sides. And eventually, it's going to sink back down. It's going to sink back down. And what you'll find is the Air, in this case, will sink back down towards the hot area, and it will recycle. It can't go any further, so it's be pushed back. It will recycle, and it will cause this cycle, this movement, this connected system, uh, this current of thermal energy moving within the air, in this particular case, and it's called a convection current. Now, this was first discovered by a few scientists. Okay, the first one we've got to look at is Sir Isaac Newton. In 1701, one of his published materials had the um, kind of indication that he looked at and studied convection. But it wasn't really uh, a confirmed discovery by Newton compared to his other works in physics, um, such as the laws of gravity. But he did publish the laws of cooling, which did stipulate the, the radiant energy cooling process. Then there was, then there was a guy named Runford in 1797. And he basically stipulated and was the first kind of documented person to explain convection currents in a liquid. And the last guy was, last two guys were DeLong and Petit. Petit. These guys in 1817 kind of built upon Rumford's uh, observations, discoveries, and did further, further experiments 
with convection. So convection currents, even though they didn't really understand what was what was going on in the Earth's interior, scientists did have a good foundation of convection currents and the movement of heat uh, through different mediums um, with different experiments, but not working with the Earth's interior. So that came about with a guy named Holmes, not Sherlock, but Holmes in 1913. Now he used the work by Rutherford in 1905, who was uh, credited with the discovery of uh, radioactive decay and the process of dating rocks through the decay of radioactive isotopes in the atoms. And Holmes used this, this newly found, you know, inspirational knowledge to date, radioactively date the rocks in the ocean floor. And he found that there was different ages and uh, there was a young age rocks on some parts of the ocean floor and he kind of then used that to indicate that there were convection currents working underneath the surface of the Earth. And he also linked it up to a missing link for Wegener's 1912 theory on Connell Drift, where all of the evidence suggested kind of made a strong case for the existence of Pangaea and everything was connected. But he could not, Wegener could not explain how these large tunnel masses were moving. And Holmes suggested that there were convection currents as a mechanism to move the plates. As the first step, the first step in proving uh, Wegener's theory of Connell drift. All right. So. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe, leave a, uh, a comment. Uh, we're going to look into the next video on how these convection currents work inside the Earth's interior and how um, Holmes's work kind of developed uh, after World War II.